But uh, for tomorrow evening, there will be a meeting where Theodore will have more time to go into all these issues. Um, but given our, um, our public comments and um, the procedures we have, she's going to take five minutes now to um, tease up some of these um, issues for us. Okay. Okay, thank you. So as, you, as we know and are talking about, small cells are microwave antennas in front of the home, except many people are unaware of all the things that are on these so-called small cells. They have large electrical cabinets, which you're going to be discussing because the prior ordinance had, I think, 20 plus cubic feet. The image, that first image is actually 20 cubic feet in terms of how large these electric cabinets can be. Plus, there would be a hardened pole, usually, in order to bear the weight of the electronics. Of course, the antennas on the top. The street lights can go up several feet, as well as the utility poles. And this is 4G densification, not 5G at this time, although it'll provide the backbone to put in 5G transmitters. Um, property devaluation to homes is an issue to consider, and I think there still needs to be much more research done now in terms of the small cells that are being put in because there's research showing a 20 percent, up to 20 percent devaluation. And there's no checks in place to address the illegally placed towers in Montgomery County. We have a lot of those. They're not the right setback. They're too tall. They're even on the wrong home. And that picture that's right above kind of all the way on the other side is actually a, a small cell that was placed on the wrong, in front of the wrong house, okay. the wrong location, and then there's no way to fix it after it's up. I believe that it's still there. So that is another uh, huge problem. So there are a lot of policies that are moving forward to control, for communities to control their rights of way. Burlington, Massachusetts, um, drafted policy with annual recertification fees, and actually Verizon ended up walking away from permit from applications they had put in. They proactively put together a small cell committee. Um, Holyoke, Massachusetts has a draft policy. They proposed $500 for city inspection. Um, for a city inspection of rooftop poles every two years. Fairfax, California, small cells are prohibited in residential areas. There's a 1,500 foot separ separation between small cells, which is something I understand is allowable, that separation distance. And the city is going to study town-wide fiber optic cable network, which is a really great idea, especially for communities that don't have access. And also, I would say, fiber optic to end user device to Ethernet um, so that it doesn't just stop at the right of way. Petaluma has an ordinance with a lot of requirements related to um, the, the, the wiring that the ground-mounted equipment cannot be installed inside, I'm sorry, not to be installed inside the pole. It must be undergrounded, flush to the ground. Um, importantly, there's the 1,500-foot minimum setback between the small cells <laughs> and no small cell within 200 feet of any residence. And I was not aware that you couldn't do a setback because the ordinance that I saw has a 30-foot in it, so I didn't know why that's part, of, that's, that's part of the confusion, that's why <laughs> I, I wanted to start with okay. that. <laughs> um, and there, there's a lot of other cities in California that are doing this, which I've listed, and, and I can send you a document that has all of that together as well. You might have some of those. In really, uh, wireless companies warn their shareholders of risk, but not their customers nor their residents. And I just want to read what Crown Castle has in their annual um, report. If radio frequency emissions from wireless handsets or equipment on our communications infrastructure are demonstrated to cause negative health effects, potential future claims could adversely affect our operations costs or revenues. If a connection between radio frequency emissions and possible negative effects were established, our operations costs or revenues may be materially and adversely affected. We currently do not maintain any significant insurance with respect to these matters. So insurance companies do not insure wireless carriers for EMF claims, not for about two decades now. Industry white papers compare EMF to asbestos and classify it as high risk. And there are exclusion clauses, generally as the industry standard for usual insurance policies. And there are a lot of questions about liability 
that I asked to Montgomery County during the whole process that ensued, and I actually never, ever got answers to that question, and that's something to think about is, um, I believe if I haven't sent you Harry Lehman's liability letter regarding SB 649, I will send that to you as well, because this is involuntary exposure. Um, and EMF is defined as a pollutant oftentimes, and you have to get a policy enhancement for it. Um, you know, if, if the federal government said we want to preempt you and we were going to have trucks with nuclear waste coming through the town, what would you do? Um, would you follow the law or make other decisions? Um, so I think I talked a little bit about this before, but there's a long, sordid story of how our FCC limits are as unfortunate as they are and non-protective, starting with adopting guidelines based on industry um, field groups, military and industry field groups. The EPA was defunded. There have been a lot of reports, letters written by our federal agencies saying, calling out problems with these limits and still no response. There's one letter, I'm going to skip over this and um, we can talk about mm -hmm. this later, but I wanted to show you this letter by um, Norbert Hankin of the EPA to C.K. Chow. He was the chief Motorola scientist and also the co-chair of the subcommittee that developed our U.S. limits, talking about many of the uh, concerns related to the limits because they are not protective. and. Uh, sometimes people say you should go to the federal government and tell them to fix this problem. The problem is that there is a revolving door between industry and government, and I just wanted to point out that Brendan Carr, FCC commissioner, is for your mm -hmm. former lawyer for uh, a, law, a law company that represented the wireless industry in suing San Francisco when they tried to pass their cell phone ordinance uh, so about half a decade ago, because there's a lot of published research on EMF and Bs. There's going to be um, radiation levels that exceed FCC limits around each installation, and that we can discuss, because that is actually exceeding FCC limits. Um, and there are research showing all kinds of changes to, uh, to B behavior and physiology. Um, trees and plants as well, but then my question is, what about the decisions on tree trimming? Who will do mm -hmm. the tree trimming? Um, in New Zealand, there was a court ruling that said the property owner had to trim their trees because it interfered with a neighbor's wireless broadband. So I know my time is up. All Thank right, you. Great. I really appreciate that, and I do want to just emphasize for folks that um, tomorrow night um, will be um, myself, Council Member Hucker, and Theodora will be um, at the fire station uh, meeting room to be able to discuss some of those issues in more depth. Um, but thank you very much for that presentation. And um, we can, the city clerk can send that around to the full city council. Did you know? That cell phone, the one in your pocket, emits radio frequency radiation. As long as your phone's turned on, even if you're not talking or texting. The American Academy of Pediatrics in over a dozen countries recommends reducing children's exposure to wireless radiation. When using a cell phone, I always keep it away from my body. I use speakerphone or a headset like this. To stop microwave exposure, I put my phone on airplane mode and turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth function. I hold the phone at a distance and make sure it's not touching my body. Cell phones are not toys. Children's brains and bodies are still developing and are vulnerable to wireless radiation. Practice safe and responsible habits with yourself and your children. When using the computer, I always try to make sure my connection is corded, not wireless. Remember not to use your cell phone in the car. The phone works at higher power in metal surroundings and bounces around, increasing your family's radiation exposure. For their safety. For your safety. Because children are more vulnerable. Remind them. Remind yourself. To limit your microwave radiation exposures.